Good morning. I'd like to welcome you to our morning worship service this morning. Uh, by the way, of uh, the internet, and so we're going to have a great time as we look into the Word of God. I want to give you a little head start on the scripture that we're going to be using. It's coming from the Sermon on the Mount that Jesus shared. Uh, you have the Matthew account of the Sermon on the Mount. Then you have a, like a little abbreviated account there in Luke of the Sermon on the Mount. And we're going to be dealing with the wise man and the foolish man. But what we're going to be focusing upon is how do we weather the storms of life? We're in the middle of a storm right now. You can call it the coronavirus storm. Uh, you can call it just the, uh, the health storm, whatever storm it might be that you want to give it a title to. But it is a storm that we're facing. It's a difficulty. It's a trial that we're facing. And so I want to encourage our people in our church this time. I know that many of you are, uh, are missing the chance of coming together and worshiping. And, and of course, with the so social distancing and everything, now, that has affected us all. And so I want to encourage you, I want to encourage you to, uh, to worship together with us. We can unite together in prayer, the study of the Word of God. And, and I want you to just pass the Word on so others can be involved in this worship as well. Uh, this morning, as we take a look at this text, I want you to focus in upon the foundation. The foundation that we need to have a strong foundation. If we're going to weather the storms of life, that's what we must have. Uh, but before we actually get started with the message, I want us to go to God in prayer. And I do want to let you know that we have many people that are struggling. They're struggling uh, physically. They're struggling financially. You think about the crash in the market that's been going on, the downward spiral, uh, on and on. So that affects a lot. A lot of people are unable to work, and so therefore they're not getting a paycheck. And, and so we need to really, really be in prayer for them. But then also we have some that are connected to our church that are, uh, they're actually, you talk about on a mission. They're on a, a mission, and they have gone to New York City. Uh, we want to be praying for uh, Greg Danther and Trevor Davis. They represent our church, and they have gone up to New York City. And so we're connected to them, and so we want to be connected to them with our prayers. And so remember them during this trying time. We want to pray for our president as well. And so as you think about this time of worship, we always want to go to God in prayer. Remember also this week is the Passion Week. Today would normally be the time that we call Palm Sunday. Always remember that the Lord, when he comes, he makes a difference. And no wonder they cried out, Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Let's go to him in prayer at this time as we begin this time in worship. Loving Father, we thank you for this hour that we have. And Lord, we are excited that you came into this world. You're the one that's made the difference. And so we cry out with the crowds, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. But then, Father, right now, I pray for, uh, for what's taking place. We pray for our president, that you'll give him wisdom, and that all the attempts of trying to pull everything together, that it does come together, Lord. And I pray that it would be just really amazing what happens, and that, that miraculously the apex of, uh, of, this, uh, of this mountain of the storm will begin to uh, go downward and that we'll see fewer and fewer people dying. We know it's supposed to be a very, very tough week the next two weeks. And so, God, I pray that you would open our eyes and our hearts to you and that you'll really work. And, Lord, we pray a special prayer right now for two that's connected to our church. We pray for Greg and Trevor. Lord, I pray right now that you would reach down and you'd put your loving arms around them, that they would sense your comforting hand, that they'll know that, that you're there with them. And Lord, that you put a hedge of protection around them, that, that the storm that they're facing, that it will pass and they'll come forth as, as, just, as a, a sure foundation that was built upon you. And Lord, I pray that through their efforts, through their efforts, that many, many people's lives will be changed and saved. Father, we pray right now for the words that we're going to share, that it be a comfort to all. In Jesus' name, amen. The passage of scripture that I'll be sharing this morning is actually from Luke chapter 6. 
And it's there in verses 46 through, uh, through 49. And what Jesus is dealing with is an individual who, um, who had cried out, Lord, Lord. He said that he was a believer, but there was something wrong. His foundation was not secure. And so Jesus takes this person and he shares a story. Look what he says. He says, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not what I tell you to do? Everyone who comes to me and hears my words and does them, I'll show you what he is like. He's like a man building a house who dug deep and laid the foundation on the rock. And when the flood arose, the storm, uh, the, the stream broke and, and against the house and could not shake it because it had been well built. But the one who hears and does not do them is like a man who built a house on the ground without a foundation. And when the stream broke against it, immediately it fell, and the ruin of the house was great. So as we think about this story here, you know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of the story of the three little pigs. Now you were wondering, I've got my granddaughter here with me this morning. Her father's here, and, and, and of course my daughter and everything, and said, yeah, yes, yeah, you'll do it. And, and she's going to share with us, not the story of the three little pigs, but the story about the three little teenagers. And I first heard this story way back at a youth conference at Look Up Lodge in Traveler's Rest, South Carolina. But I want you to focus in upon this story and the foundation that each of the little teenagers laid. Ashley Kate, would you please read for us? Once upon a time, there were three little teenagers who left home and went into the world. Before they left, they were told to never forget the foundation, the, f the foundation which their life was built. The first teenager was built her foundation on her relationship with her boyfriend. Everything she did was to impress him. How she did her hair, the way she dressed, she laughed at his not so funny jokes. And even though his crud and even thought his crudeness was cute. At night they would talk on the phone until one of them fell asleep and that was usually him. The second little teenager built his foundation on being a star athlete. Everything he did was to maintain his image. The extra workouts, the extra hour the hours spent practicing in the gym, all to make sure everyone knew who he was. At night he would even sleep under his trophies to remind him of all his achievements. The third little teenager built his foundation on Christ. Everything he did, from his schoolwork, his relationship with friends and family, and the way he treated others, he did he did to honor Christ. At night he spent time reading his Bible and asking God to be his foundation. One day the first little teenager went to meet her boyfriend, but he had found a new girl. He started telling her things like, it's not you, it's me, and we can still be friends. She began to cry as he told her he was breaking up with her. She felt deeply depressed and helpless. At night, she cried herself to sleep, knowing she had built her foundation with straw. One day, the second little teenager was playing in the big game when he heard something pop. Rumors spread around that he may never play again, and he lost his spot on the team. He was devastated. What would he do if he didn't play sports? At night, he laid awake, struggling to find, his, to find peace, knowing he had built his foundation with sticks. The third little teenager came home one evening, and his parents wanted to have a talk. As they sat there, start, they started telling him, things, things between us is not working. And that doesn't change how much we love you. The perfect life he thought he had started crumbling. He questioned why this was happening. His foundation, though shaken, stood strong because he had built it on the brick. Thank you. Thank you, Ashton Kate. Wonderful job in sharing with us. Ashton Kate, I don't know what grade she's in now here in Georgia. Uh, they, <laughs> they're actually through with school and... They, you know, it, you're talking about, it's like a half a school year. So she could be a fifth grader now, uh, or she may be still in fourth grade. But but actually, I believe, Ashley Kate, you'd probably be in fifth grade now, aren't you? 
We don't know. We're pretty sure they sort of, she's in fourth grade now, but next year she'll be fifth grade. So uh, we'll find out in Georgia what happens with this. But when you think about the story, think about what Jesus Christ was describing here, this individual. He said, Lord, Lord. But then Jesus pointed out that there was something really wrong with him. His foundation was not sure. See, when we try to build our life on anything but Christ, it may seem logical even work for a while. But when the storms of life come, the truth is made clear. See, our misplaced trust, if you're putting your faith in something else besides Jesus Christ, just like the first little little teenager, what she put her faith in? It's her boyfriend. That was her foundation that she had built. The second one, he was a great athlete and he put his foundation upon being a star athlete. Of course, uh, when his knee blew out or <laughs> ankle blew out, whatever it was blew out, well, that ruined that, that foundation that he had. And then the, the, first, the first little teenager, her foundation was upon a boyfriend. Wow, you know how that goes at times. And of course, that blew apart. And then of course, the third one. Remember that little teenager? He put his foundation in Jesus Christ. Well, when we think about this foundation, this person here had his had his life in, it was not right. And so ask this question, ask yourself this question. If I'm to weather life's storms, how will I do this? How will I be able to do it? Well, number one, what we discover is if you're going to weather life's storms, first of all, uh, you've got to ha establish a solid foundation. It's got to be true. It's got to be something that will last. You know, the scriptures is very, very clear that, uh, that as believers, we're going to face trials. See, scripture never promises us as believers that we're going to be storm-free. You know what it tells us? It tells us just the opposite. Uh, see, Jesus, in this Sermon on the Mount, there in Matthew chapter 5, he says it rains on the just and the unjust. I love the passage of scripture in 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verses 8 through 9, it encourages believers in when we face difficulties, and we're going through a trial now, we're going through difficulties now, we're going through a storm now, how to be victorious. You know what it says there in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 8 through 9? You may want to turn there and look, but, uh, but notice what it says. It says that we are encouraged. We're encouraged, and this is the reason why. Because we're hard pressed. Now think about it. We're hard pressed on every side, but not crushed. We're perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not abandoned. Oh, we've been knocked down, but not destroyed. Right now, there are many believers that are going through these tough times. Now, what will these tough times, what will these times bring about. Well, I'll tell you one thing that it does, it, for a believer, it will reveal the nature of our foundation. It points to our reality of who we are. And are we firmly in Jesus Christ? Now, when a storm rages against people that don't know the Lord, it could drive them to a the Lord. But for, for a child of God, for us, it should cause us to come closer to him because he's our help in this time of need. So take a look with me there, and he and you wonder, well, how can I establish a strong foundation? Well, look what Jesus says. He says, everyone, number one, what do he say? Comes to me. Comes to me. See, if you want a strong foundation, if you want to establish a strong foundation, first thing we must do is come to Jesus Christ. Oh, remember what Jesus said? Jesus says, come unto me, all ye that labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Oh, Jesus also said, all the Father gives to me will come to me. And whoever comes to me, here's a promise, I will not cast out. John chapter 7, verse 37, Jesus stood up and cried out, says, if anyone thirst. See, we all come into this world needing a Savior. And when you're thirsty for a Savior, let him come. That's what he says. Jesus says, let him come to me and drink. Revelation chapter 22, uh, when you look at the very end of the book of Revelation, here's a, an invitation that's there. It says, the spirit and the bride say, come. And let 
the one who hears say come, and let the one who is thirsty come, and let the one who desires to take of the water of life come. Oh, when you see what Jesus says here, that foundation, you want a strong foundation. First of all, we need to come to you. Second, we need to hear the words. Hear the words. Of you. See, he spoke the words so that we may come to know him. What did the Bible tell us there in John chapter 5? It tells us that, that, that we're able to come to him. Not only that, we're, we're told there in Romans chapter 10 that faith comes by hearing, hearing by. So here we find that we come to him. We see, we hear the word, we come to him, and then we Heed the word. If you want a strong foundation, if you want a strong foundation, you know what we must do? Come to him. Listen to him. That means spend time with him. That means talk with him and let God talk with us. Now, how does he speak to us? Through his word. That's the main way. Now, the spirit of God speaks to us in our heart, but the spirit of God takes the word of God, illuminates it, and we hear the voice of God. So we heed that. And when we hear, you know what we do? We apply it. So see, we need to, first of all, establish a strong foundation. But look there with me in verse 48. You know what we discover there in verse 48? We see the storm comes. See, as a person in life, we should expect storms to come our way. See, it's going to rain on the just as well as the unjust. So we need to be looking for the storms. See, if we're going to be looking for the storms, we need to be prepared. And so you think about it, you know, storms come. How do storms come? They come unexpectedly. They come when you least expect it. Just a month ago, yeah, or let's say two months ago, how many of us would have been anticipating this coronavirus storm? I don't think so. I, I was. There, there are some that would say, hey, they should have known, but... The world was all wrapped up in something else. They weren't wrapped up in uh, uh, in the coronavirus. You know, you think about what the Congress was doing at that time. They're trying to impeach the president. So you look and you see uh, what was going on. People weren't thinking about that. They weren't thinking about the storm when the storm came. It came unexpectedly. And also when it came, it was not only unexpectedly coming, it came severely. Oh, when you think about the future. They, they, they call it uh, the graphs, that you're able to see the graphs and what they, what they expect could happen, the number of people whose lives could be taken. I don't know about you, but I'm glad that the Lord came into this world, that God left heaven and came into this world. And do you remember, do you remember on that day, Palm Sunday, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Oh, we remember when Jesus Christ, the incarnation, when he came as a child, how the angels were singing and, and, and rejoicing. But oh, whenever he came down that Via Della Rosa, when he came to Jerusalem that week before, remember there were the praises to him. But oh, the crowd got quiet. Because remember what happened the week of Passion, that Jesus came to die for us. Aren't you glad that Jesus came into this world because he loves you? That he came to die for you? Oh, when I'm facing the storm of life, first of all, what I need to, I need to establish a strong foundation. I need to be hooked in with Jesus Christ. I need to be closely following him. I need to come to him, so I need to hear him. And I need to respond to him. But look also. See, it requires some good work. So you need to expect a storm. And so if you're going to expect, you've got to be prepared. And, and so he dug deeply. He dug a foundation. He made the proper foundation. But now look at the fool. Look what happened with the fool. But the one who hears and does not do them is like a man who built his house on the ground without a foundation. When the stream broke against it, immediately it fell. And the ruin of the house was great. We're going to weather the storm. You know, first of all, we need to establish a strong foundation. And that strong foundation is in Jesus Christ. We come to him, we hear him, and we obey him. Secondly, we need to expect the storms. The storms are coming. That's what you prepared for. That's what we need to be ready for. But all oh, then, we got to excel. When the storm comes, we need to excel. 
you know what happens if you, like a sailor, a, a sailor, whenever there was a storm that was about to come, remember what they would have to do? They had to batten down the hatches. They get everything strapped down. And, and so, so it doesn't go overboard. And so you think about your life. We need to get everything secure because the storm is coming. Oh, when I think about the storms that we could be facing, we have to be prepared. See, the wise men, the wise men, every now and then when I was growing up, I'd get in trouble at church. And uh, I was not really a singer, even from the time I was a little bitty guy. But there was one song I remember I would sing with great enthusiasm. And many of you can remember it from Vacation Bible School. The wise man, what did he do? He built his house upon the rock. Remember that? Oh, me. And then the foolish man, remember, he built his house upon the sand. And oh, do you remember with all the enthusiasm at the very end? Remember what happened when the rains came down and the floods came up? Oh, my, that's when I got excited. Because all of a sudden, remember what happened to the foolish man's house? It went splat. Of course, I shouted it out. I hollered it out. I was a little bit louder than the rest of the crowd. I wasn't harmonizing with the group. And the next thing I knew, my dad sort of took me out of the crowd. I was in trouble. Well, let me share something with you. If you don't have a strong foundation, your house is going to fall. When I was in college, it's in 1977, it's about Austin State, I'd been at ABAC, and it's about Austin State. It was November the 6th, 1977. Been raining quite a bit that month, and uh, up in, in South Carolina, the upstate of South Carolina, and also the upstate of Georgia, Tacoa, where many of our young people have gone to camp up there at Tacoa where our Baptist assembly is. and But at that time, up in Tacoa, there was a Christian college, Christian Missionary Alliance College, a, a very, very good school. But something happened that night at 1.30. That dam that was made of earthen red clay, it burst. If you remember what took place, 39 people, at Tacoa Bible College were killed that night. I remember when I looked at the news that Sunday morning, saw, I saw the tears of wives who lost their husband, fathers who saw their children die, and many of the ones that were killed were preachers. I remember one of the ladies with tears in her eyes. She was crying about her husband, but she was crying for the world. She talked about the preachers that were going to share the gospel so that people can know Jesus. Some would look and say, how could she be so strong? Well, she made a sure foundation. I remember when they interviewed her, she says, my foundation's upon the rock. And God's going to raise up others to tell the world about Jesus. When I heard that, God touched my heart. It says, Henry, you need to do your part. Let me share this with you. This storm that we're going through right now, I want to encourage you, make sure you've got a strong foundation. Make sure that you're expecting the storm. But finally, let's excel through the storm. And when we come out on the other side, we'll be able to say, to God be the glory. As we close now, maybe you've never trusted Jesus as your Savior. I want you to come. I want you to come to him. And as a believer, maybe you've been wandering away from God. I want you to go to your knees. And I want you to say, Father, I want to follow you. 
I know you've gifted me. I know you have pointed me in the right direction. But I haven't secured everything on my dock that I need to be taken care of. I want to get things right. And I want to come back to you. Weather this storm. Come out on the other side victorious. And you can do that when you establish a strong foundation. When you expect storms to come your way. And oh yes, excel through the storm. Thank you for this time. And I pray that God has spoken to your heart.